Okay, what's going on, everybody? We're here. We're live. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, if you can hear me clearly, please hit the like, or not hit the like button, but uh, drop a one in the live chat, and then we can get today's show started. Um, but you should be able to hit, hear me clearly. But, you know, anyways, please drop a one if you can hear me clearly, just so I know that you can hear me on your end. And uh, I want to respond to Carlton Way really quick. He said, you and Rob are on at the same time. Damn. Listen, Carlton, do me a favor, brother. Do me a favor, Carlton. Head on over to Rob's live stream and tell him that I said, I'm live right now and it's time for you to shut it down. Okay? He's been live for like about three hours or so already. It's time to shut it down. Let him know I'm live now. Go to his comment section, his live chat, and tell him. TD said it's time to shut it down, Rob, and, and head on over here to this channel, okay? Let him know I said that. <laughs> I, I did. I meant to hop into his live stream earlier, uh, but I just didn't I just didn't get around to it. You know, I was in his live stream yesterday. But, uh, yeah, it's time for Rob to shut it down, man. I'm in like three-plus hours. Come on now. Come on, man. But uh, let's get into uh, today's show. I see uh, <laughs> you all can, uh, can hear me uh, clearly, obviously. So... Please, uh, before we get started, um, hit that like button. That's very important um, to signal out into the uh, YouTube algorithm that you are all interested in that YouTube should push this video out some more. Hit the like button if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Share this video out on all your social media platforms, please, um, and also share it out right now in this moment if you're watching the live stream so that people know that I'm live and also, if you haven't already, please make sure you follow me on Telegram. The goal is for by the end of the year for me to be able to reach 1000 followers on Telegram. The Telegram link is pinned to the live chat above. It is also in the description box below, and it will be pinned in the comment section after this live stream is over. So make sure to follow me on Telegram. Uh, you can find me with my name, TD Hip Hop Media. So now let's get into today's show. Um, I wanted to do a quick follow-up and a lot of people have done this uh, already, but I wanted to make sure that I do a quick follow-up as well uh, concerning uh, what's been going on in the city of Chicago as it pertains to the $51 million um, that was held up for, for about a week after a uh, protest, you know, by many black Chicagoans who were upset that over the fact that they were being, uh, under-prioritized, we'll say, for lack of better words, that illegal immigrants in Chicago are being prioritized over them. Uh, they came to a city council meeting that was going on. They disrupted it via protest, and it actually pushed the vote back for this funding a week. Uh, last Wednesday, the $51 million finally came up for a vote. It was agreed upon, and now the $51 million will be going to address the so-called migrant crisis right so now before we dive too deep um into this update uh what i want to do i want to do a, a few things first right uh first i want to play a couple clips for you uh because what i found interesting is that while uh this was happening right as everyone was voting yes to i shouldn't say everyone but the majority voted yes to the 51 million dollar funding right to address the so-called migrant crisis there was a lot of uh in my opinion, how I feel about it, fake sympathizing with black Chicago, right? There was a whole lot of, oh, you know, we understand, you know, this is a difficult thing for black folks in Chicago. And, you know, we know that you all need help, too. There, there was a lot of that going on. And I, and I want to play that uh, because I, I just found that interesting. And I, I'm going to speak to that as well. First thing that I want to do is that I want to play what Brandon Johnson, the mayor of Chicago, actually had to say about all of this uh, once the $51 million was approved. And I specifically want to play the portion to where he addressed Black Chicago. One of the critiques that I had of him with the, of the many that I do have was his refusal to just say Black. He wouldn't say Black Chicago. He wouldn't acknowledge Black Chicago as just, you know, Black folks. Uh, he kept referring to them as, you know, underserved communities, underinvested communities and, and, and nonsense of that nature. But he actually acknowledged Black Chicago by their name and saying Black. So, you know, I give him, I guess, a little bit of credit for that, given the fact that he did say that. And I want you all to actually listen to what he had to say. So let's dive into uh, Brandon Johnson very quickly. 
Hello, Mayor. Uh, what's your take on, on, on the tone of the debate today, given the xenophobic expressions we, we've heard from, from the Tribune? From who? From, from the outside of, uh, the, I see. of the floor. The vast majority of people um, recognize the, the um, challenge that we have. They do. Is anyone going to disagree that black communities in particular have been disinvested in? No one's going to disagree with that. Y'all know the work that I did before I got here, organizing against school closings, mental health centers being shut down. And, and so the tone really reflects the failures of the past. But today was a demonstration of how we move forward. I'm confident that we will continue to build the type of consensus that's needed in order to bring the city of Chicago closer together. There really is enough for everyone. It's a matter of how we prioritize that enough. And so you heard people express their pain. I know that pain. I've lived it. I mean, shoot, I don't get my first paycheck till tomorrow. I'm just saying. It's hard out here for everyone. And we also have to recognize that we have an opportunity to do something righteous. And that's to make sure that families who want to call the city of Chicago their home, regardless of how they got here, that Chicago is big enough to take care of the residents who have been here and make room for those who wish to call Chicago home. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. I really do appreciate you all's time. Thank you. So that's what Brandon Johnson had to say. So I wanted to play that for you all really quickly. And like I said, you know, one of my big critiques of him is that uh, he refuses to uh, acknowledge black Chicago by saying who they are black. Uh, and he did. Uh, so I'll give him a little bit of credit for that. You get one point. But we'll see if there's any actual follow through. History says that there won't be. But I guess we'll see. Now, this kind of I guess you can say pandering for lack of better terms. Uh continued i shouldn't say continued but this was a continuation of that what you saw with brandon johnson from the actual uh city council meeting that took place in which they voted for the 51 million dollars right uh, so i want to play some of that for you right now so you can see what the alderman actually had to say who voted for this to be passed so let me play that for you right now and then we're going to get into a few articles and a couple of other things as well <laughs> Today at City Council, the deaf. Let me rewind that back. I'm conflicted. Today at City Council, the definition of politics, a battle over scarce resources. At issue, whether to appropriate $51 million in budget surplus money to help care for migrants sent to Chicago from Texas. The council approved the spending with 34 members voting yes and 13 voting no. Debate was passionate and at times emotional. And I'm conflicted because in my heart, I know what's right. I know it's right to want to help other people. Because as black people, that's what we do. But when the hell are y'all going to help us? So if there's enough to go around, then let's pass an ordinance where we see the enough. Although the money will only last through June and other communities must wait to see new investments, some members urge their colleagues to be pragmatic about their vote. What we are listening to today is historical and generational trauma. Decades, centuries of disinvestment in our black communities. And everybody that's working hard for this, you've got to show up for black Chicagoans with the same energy. Alderman Raymond Lopez opposed the measure, saying millions have already been spent supporting migrants. Nobody wants to ask the question that Jerry Maguire made so famous. Show me the money. Where is it? Also speaking out today, community activists strongly opposed to using the money for the migrants. Several members of council noted today that it's the federal government that left Chicagoans fighting over how to handle the migrants. They want to see the Biden administration do more. Live this afternoon from City Hall, Tamon Bradley, WGN News. Like I spoke on before, um, when I, I, I spoke about this 
topic, obviously, in Lent and detail, I should say, uh, as far as how this is obviously happening in New York as well. Right. Uh, the Biden administration is deliberately uh, twiddling his thumbs and not doing anything about this. Right. They're not providing these cities with the proper funding needed uh, in order to handle the so-called crisis that was man-made by him and his administration. They're doing that on purpose. Uh, and in, it's in my opinion, it's being done deliberately because I do believe that this situation is going to drag out for a couple of years. Um, it's not going to resolve anytime soon. I believe there's a very deliberate effort on behalf of the Democratic Party to see cities like Chicago and New York and D.C. Uh, begin to crumble under the weight of illegal immigration so that by the time they get back in power, uh, whether it be in the next uh, election that occurs or it be four years from now, right, after, let's say, Trump or DeSantis wins, these cities will be in such disarray and in such dire need for resolve concerning illegal immigration and funding that it will create a general sentiment within the country that will allow the next Democratic president, the opportunity, right, or at least the 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 general consensus needed to take swift uh, action concerning immigration reform and a fast track to citizenship, which would most likely, at least in my opinion, right, and maybe it's a bit extreme, but which will most likely come by way, <clears throat> excuse me, by way of executive order, right? Some people might say. Well, they can't do that. Um, but if I remember correctly, DACA came by way, the Dreamers Act, right, came by way of executive order. And many people have argued uh, very well that that shouldn't have been an executive order. That should have came to a vote. Um, but Obama did that by way of executive order. I can see that happening again um, with these cities completely crumbling under the weight of illegal immigration and the presidency of whoever is in office not doing anything about it uh, will create a situation where now, like I said, action has to be taken swiftly to do something about it. So now I want to do what I want to do really quick is that I want to move on to a couple articles that I want to discuss as far as the updates are concerned, because there are some things that I would like to add on to um, what we've been listening to so far. Right now, there are, I believe, 302 people in here. Please make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. Hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. And also, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms as well. So everyone knows that I'm currently live right now in this moment and that this information gets out there to those who need to hear it. So now let's dive into this article uh, very quickly. Uh, this is coming from um, NBC5 uh, Chicago. Article is titled... Chicago City Council approves 51 million in funding to address to address migrant crisis. And Desmond uh, Peebles, you make a very good point there. I almost forgot to acknowledge that. And it's something that I want to dive into a little bit as we get into this article. Desmond Peebles said, when we tell the truth, it's called xenophobia. Um, that is 100 percent the truth. What you're saying right now, whenever you tell the truth, it's called xenophobia. And I'm actually going to get into that. I believe it's in the next article that I'm going to read. But let's get into this one right now. It's not going to take too long. And let me scroll down. Give me just a moment. So let me read this off, right? The Chicago City Council voted in favor of passing a $51 million budget amendment on Wednesday that aims to address the needs of, of migrants and asylum seekers in Chicago. The money originates from surplus funding with the chamber voting 34 to 13 in the measure's favor. The amendment passes just days after the city moved 300 migrants into temporary housing at Wilbur Wright College in Chicago's Dunning neighborhood with a heated community meeting preceding the move. I think it's really it's a real unfortunate situation for everybody, said 33rd Alderwoman Rosanna Rodriguez Sanchez. These migrants didn't ask to come to Chicago, and I think Chicago has established itself as a sanctuary city, and it's our responsibility to make sure the people who are arriving here with nothing have at least some basic protections. I want to speak to that. I want to speak to what she just said, okay, concerning Chicago being established as a sanctuary city. 
And it is Chicago's responsibility to make sure that those coming into the city based on the fact that it is a sanctuary city has basic protection. Right. Uh, but before we do that, shout out to Tom Slick. Thank you very much for your contribution to the channel. It's deeply appreciated. Tom Slick is always showing love. Um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, he is the first person to contribute to today's show. Uh, once again, thank you, good brother, because you're always coming through uh, with the support for the channel. And I, like I said, it's deeply appreciated. But let's get back to what Miss Sanchez had to say, right? Let's get back to what she had to say. A lot of people, right? Going back to the sanctuary city stuff. A lot of people like to hop in my comment section and, and ask me, you know, about the solution. What's the solution? What's the solution? What and who are you saying we should vote for? What are you saying that we should do? Right. A lot of people like to ask that. And the solution that I propose is the same one that I proposed. I, I want to say now for a year and a half now. Right. All of 2021, my videos were specifically more or less focused on Biden and Harris and the Biden administration. But. If you noticed in 2022, there was a pivot in my content where I really started focusing a lot more on what's happening in different areas across the country, like New York, Chicago. And I started emphasizing heavily on local politics. I started he emphasizing heavily on that. Right. Local politics is your solution. That's your solution. That is the solution. Right. When you look at what's happening in Chicago and you look at what's happening in New York and you look at what's happening across other cities in this country as it pertains to, quote, non-citizen voting, that's all local politics. That's not Joe Biden. That's not Kamala Harris. That's not that's not who's doing that. It's local politics. Right. It's local. Po local politics is the reason that Chicago is a sanctuary city. That's why it's like that. So the solution is for you to take control of your local politics. By putting grassroots candidates into office that will actually serve you and fight for you and put forth solutions for you and your community. Right. It is significantly easier and cheaper to get a grassroots candidate into city council and other local official positions than it is for you to get them into Congress. than it is for you to get them into the House of Representatives or the Senate. It is significantly easier to get them in the city council. And you see the kind of havoc that city council uh, is, is wreaking on these cities. You see what they did in D.C., you know, what, two months back when I reported they were the next, the, the, the newest city in D.C. to allow non-citizen voting. Right. It's significantly easier to get grassroots candidates into those uh, positions. And that's what, where the focus should be. Also concerning local politics, local politics affects you immediately, right now, right? But when you're talking about the effects of what's happening nationally, you don't feel the effects of that for like a decade from the time that certain bills are passed, if at all. And if we're being completely honest, more times than not, you don't feel the effects of what's happening concerning national politics. From the Clinton administration up until now, how much, how has your life, how drastically has your life changed from president to president to president to president? It really doesn't change much at all. It doesn't. But what does make a huge difference <laughs> is who's mayor of your city, right? And who's on city council. That makes a huge difference. Politics, as Dean Grant, shout out to you, like you said, is the key. Local politics is the key. So I don't know I, what more else you want me to say. I could tell you a lot more. There is more that I could say, but that's the key. Shout out to uh, Ross uh, uh, McK McKins. I believe I'm saying, I, I know I'm saying your last name wrong. I apologize. Uh, Ross said, these sanctuary cities and countries and counties uh, need to reverse being sanctuary cities and counties. I agree with you, Ross. And I appreciate your contribution to the channel. You are the second person to now uh, contribute to today's show. It is deeply appreciated and it does not go unnoticed. Thank you very much. Um, but I agree with you 100 percent. But here's the thing, um, Ross. At this point, it's already too late. If we're being honest, right? It's already too late. The, 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 the damage has already been done as it pertains to the dwindling of the black population population 
populations, right, in these cities that are sanctuary cities. The damage has already been done. <laughs> like like Sla <laughs> like Slauson girl just said, you know, y'all know I don't like to curse, but you can read what she says in the uh, in the in the chat, <laughs> right? And it's true. The goal is now to fortify your communities. That's what the goal is now. You're you're not. I hear I hear a lot, and I see a lot on Twitter and stuff where people say things like, you know. We need to call ICE and all this kind of stuff. And we need to secure the border. And obviously, you need to secure the borders, right? That goes without saying. But the reality is, like I said, the, the damage is done already, man. It's, 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 that's, that's, you're past that. When you're talking about calling ICE and all that, you know, you're, you're, you're way past all that for the most part, to a degree, right? What you need to do now is focus on fortifying your neighborhoods, right? Fortifying your communities to make sure that you're not in a position to where you can just have situations like what we see in Chicago where undocumented so-called migrants are just steamrolled into your community to which there's nothing you can do about it and you can't fight back against it at all, right? That happens to you because you're not in control of anything. You're not in control of your own communities. You got to fortify it. And that's the current goal and what needs to be done now. Fortify the community. So let's carry on, right? I want to go in a little bit more right here. And I want to read what this alderman had to say here. Alderman Nicholas um, Spasado, right, who represents the ward where Wilbur Wright College is located, says he's voting against it. And he did. And here's what he had to say. It's not something I support. All they have to do is put a, a substitute in, excuse me. All they have to do is put a substitute in and say that $51 million is for homeless people, and then I will support it. But yet they want to stick firm for the asylum seekers only. So I can't support that. Pay attention to that and, and, and notice what he's saying. If all they did was change the language and say, hey, this is for the homeless, understand that would apply for the asylum seekers as well. Because technically they're homeless, right? If that It would apply for them. They would have access to those resources. But as you can see, those... uh. uh in the Brandon Johnson administration, right? You gotta call a spade a spade. They are hell-bent or were hell-bent and will still be on making sure that that money was specifically and exclusively for migrants. And I'm not gonna play the video for you right now, but you've all seen it a million times over before with Dr. Claude Anderson. I'll just give you a brief summary of what he said at the end. You know, he said, we can't fight against all these groups, right? You're going to slide the fourth on a population list. If you couldn't get anything when you were number two, you're not getting anything when you're number four. And everybody knows this. And we can't fight against all of them. That was what he said. And that's what you're witnessing now, right? You're noticing other groups making sure that they prioritize themselves over you with no regard to how these things actually affect your community. Right. There's no regard to that. They don't care. How many of you all remember that clip that I would play of the New York City Council when they originally passed the law for non-citizen voting? Now, as most of you remember, that law was then I believe the word I'm looking for is repealed by the New York State Supreme Court as I believe unconstitutional, you know, as it pertains to the New York State Constitution. Right. So it got tossed out. But in the video of that city council meeting in New York, when I played it, it was a black city council member who stood up and said, well, we don't know how this is going to affect the black community yet. We don't know how this is going to affect the black community. Newsflash, nobody cares. They don't care how it's going to affect the black community. That's why they passed it. They didn't think to consider you because so what? We got the ball now and we're going to run with it. And that's just what it's going to be. That's where we're at right now, okay? 
And once again, going back to what I was saying earlier, that's why local politics was and continues to be so important. And that's why it is the key. Shout out to Untried Genius. I appreciate the super chat, brother. He's the third person to now contribute to today's stream. I appreciate that very much. It is very much appreciated and much needed. Untried Genius said, imagine having your resources soaked up by someone else than being told you're next in line for your own dollars. Oh, wait, it's already happening. <laughs> Absolutely. It's already happening. It's already happening. And we're going to dive more into that as well, what you're saying just now, as well as going back to, I believe it was Desmond, I believe the person's name was Desmond, um, who said that whenever you tell the truth, right, it's considered xenophobic. We're going to get into all that right now as we dive into the next article. So let me hop into it right now. Did I, was there anything else on here? No, there was nothing else on here that I wanted to read. Okay. So now let's come to this next article right here from, um, ABC, ABC 7 Eyewitness News, Chicago, right? The article is titled, uh, Chicago City Council Approves $51 Million for Migrant Housing Outdoor Dining Program, okay? So uh, I want to jump to a few ports, parts right here that are highlighted. Okay, let me just remove this video from the side. And also while I'm doing these kind of little maintenance things, there are 402 of you in the live stream right now. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. Please hit the like button, share this video out on your social media platforms so everyone knows that I'm currently live. And also, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. Also, the goal for the end of this year is to have 1,000 followers on Telegram. So please follow me on Telegram if you have not already. The link to my Telegram is pinned in the live chat above. It is also in the description box below, and it will also be pinned in the comment section once this live stream is over. Okay. So now uh, let's get into this article right here. Okay. Give me just a second. Okay. Now let me read this part off. More than 10,000 asylum seekers have arrived in Chicago since last August. Hundreds are still sleeping on floors in various police departments. This proposed funding is only expected to last through June. Aldermen were split on which way to vote, with some saying the money should go to underfunded neighborhoods, which it should have, and others saying this is a sanctuary city that must help those seeking asylum. We have to help the residents of this big city. It's not an either or, it's both, 17th Ward Alderman David Moore said. I want to take a moment to elaborate on that for a moment, right? What I'm starting to see and notice is that that word and term sanctuary city this is a sanctuary city chicago is a sanctuary city new york is a sanctuary city right dc is a sanctuary city it's starting to get used now if i can draw kind of a metaphor a paint, paint a visual for you when you're hearing that chicago is a sanctuary city it's almost like when you hear that being said a flag is being planted into the ground. New York is a sanctuary city, meaning this is ours now. You get what I'm saying? This is our town now. This is a sanctuary city. It's almost like code speak. I'm starting to notice now the way that that term is being used and, 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 and thrown around with such emphasis and in, in, in force, right? To say that we occupy this territory now. Chicago was a sanctuary city. Black folks, you had your chance, but this is a sanctuary city now, you know, and I'll stop saying that this is a sanctuary city. Um, but also with that, I'm also noticing that the constant use of making sure to highlight that said city is a sanctuary city is also now the excuse, right, to put in place an unlimited supply 
of finances and resource to put forth an unlimited supply of, of finances and resources, right? Because this is a sanctuary city. We have no choice. We have to provide all these resources uh, to these so-called migrants, right? Because this is a sanctuary city. We have no choice. We have to fund them millions upon millions of dollars, right? Even if it comes to uh, uh, the loss of, of programs for you, as we see happening in New York, a lot of resources and programs that were supposed to originally go to the citizens of New York, uh, they've cut back on a lot of those. Because in New York, the bill, the ticket is high. What was it, $4.2 billion this year that there was estimated? And if I remember correctly, um, um, I was going to say Adam Silver, that's the NBA. Uh, <laughs> Eric Adams, <laughs> if I remember correctly, Eric Adams um, already, uh, him and his team already estimated that um, going forth in 2024, they're already looking at, I believe it was like $2.5 billion, you know, that they're going to be spending on, you know, legal immigrants that are over there now by way of Texas, you know, that's cutting into the actual programs that was needed for, you know, New York citizens. That's what's happening. But we have to do it. Why? Because this is a sanctuary city. So there's no choice. Right. There's always a loophole. There's always a justification for why these politicians can do whatever they need to do for other groups. But notice how when it comes to you, there's never any loophole. There's never any proper justification. There is no term that they can just throw around and use to which they can say, hey, we have no choice. We have to do this because of this is a such and such city or whatever. No, when it comes to you, eh, you know, it sucks to be you. But when it comes to everybody else, there's all the excuses in the world. There's all the terminology that's needed to explain away why we have to do uh, uh, said uh, 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 said thing as it pertains to finances and resources. I want to. Take a quick shout out, excuse me, or give a quick shout out to W. <laughs> shout out to W uh, for the super chat. Uh, w said, no different than the rainbow mob, right? And I agree with W. And thank you very much uh, for your super chat and for contributing to today's show. It's very much needed and much appreciated. Thank you, W, very, very much. Uh, now let's carry on because I want to read a couple more things in this article um, and then we're going to wrap this update up. Right. Uh, so let me. Am I scrolling down? Yes. Here we go. OK, so ha! I really wanted to get to this part right here because I'm curious to what you all have to say concerning this, what I'm going to read now. And also, there are 491 of you in here right now. Please hit the like button <clears throat> if you haven't already. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you all know I can't do one live stream without having to drink some water or something. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm good now. Sorry about that. I can't get through one live stream without having to take a, take a sip of something. Boy. So let me read this off for you. I find this very interesting and uh, I'm curious to everyone's response in the live chat, as well as for those of you um, listening on the replay, right? Chicago's GOP leaders, along with members of the Black community, Collaborative and Neighborhood Network Alliance, held a press conference urging aldermen to vote no. We don't know where the money is coming from, said Steve uh, Bolton, Chicago Republican Party chairman. We are not being told where the money is going to be spent. We are not being told, uh, excuse me, we are not being told where the money is going to be spent. It is irresponsible for the city council to appropriate what is no more than a stopgap than stopgap money that will get us through a month or two. And then the problem will still be staring us in the face. I want to read that one more time. My apologies. Let me let me read that direct quote one more time. We don't know where the money is coming from, said Steve Bolton, Chicago Republican Party chairman. We are not being told where that money is going to be spent. We are not being told how that money is being spent. It is irresponsible for the city council to appropriate what is no more than a stop than stopgap money that will get us through a month or two. And then the problem will still be there 
staring us in the face. Mind you, that was the Chicago Republican Party chairman who is standing alongside black Chicagoans, particularly those who are members of the Black Community Collect Collaborative and Neighborhood Network, right? Alliance. My question is this. Where is the CBC? Where is the Congressional Black Caucus? Right? Where is the Chicago Black Caucus? Where are they at? Where is uh what's the Al Sharpton? Where's Jesse Jackson? Where's Corey Bush? Where's Jamal Bowman? Where's Ayanna Presley? Anybody? Where, where are any of the Democrats that we all love to vote blue, no matter who for, that claim to understand the trials, tribulations, and struggles of the community so much? But when you're in need right now, particularly in the city of Chicago, they're not standing next to you. It's the GOP who's standing next to you. I find that very interesting, and I'm curious to what you all think about that. I'm curious to what you all think about that in the live chat, as well as those of you who are watching the replay. The folks that we vote blue no matter who for, they're not standing next to Black Chicago right now. <laughs> it's Chicago's GOP. It's Steve Bolton, the Chicago Republican Party chairman that's standing next to Black Chicago. And I know what some of you may say, right? Those of you who love to vote blue no matter who, right? You'll say, well, this is a trick. They're just tricking you all, right? This is a trick. They're just tricking you all for, you know, a, a, a photo op. And, you know, they're going to use this for like either Trump or DeSantis. Don't believe it. They don't really care. It's a trick. There's no evidence that supports that this is a trick. There isn't any evidence at all. But there is 60 years over half a century of evidence that proves that black Americans have actually been getting tricked by the Democratic Party since 1964. Because as I've always said, and I will continue to say, right? You've been voting blue no matter who for 60 years, 60 years of evidence, only for the end result to be that by 2053, the median uh, wealth of black American will black Americans will be zero. And because of open border policy, you will now have slid down to fourth on the population list by 2065. There's plenty of evidence that supports that you've been getting tricked by the Democrats. There is no evidence that supports that at this moment in time, what's happening in Chicago concerning the GOP standing next to them, that this is a trick. All right. So what are you saying, TD? You saying we got to go vote Republican now? We got to we got to be Republicans. What I'm telling you is to use politics and elections and politicians for the tools that they are. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you to go from voting blindly for Democrats to now go vote blindly Republican. But use politics and politicians as the tools that they are. Politics, by and large, is not going to be your overall solution. Voting isn't the overall solution. Those are all just tools to get what you need so that you can do the things that you need to do. So in this particular case right here, in this particular situation, as it pertains to the Chicago GOP leaders standing next to Black Chicago for this issue, it might be in your best interest, it might be in your best interest to side with them on this. It might be in your best interest come election time when, you know, when it was time to vote and all this stuff again, local politics and everything. It might be in your best interest to actually entertain the Chicago GOP and see if you can make a deal with them and see if. You can talk to them and actually work something out to where, hey, you know, so when you get into office, all this prioritizing illegal immigrants over the black community is going to come to an end. Yeah, we can agree on that. OK, you can negotiate something. 
that might only be temporary. But that temporary stoppage of just allowing, of having a floodgate open of so-called migrants pouring into the city, a temporary stoppage of that, a stoppage of having uh, undocumented migrants being allowed to work in the city where you now have to compete with them for jobs, a temporary stoppage of that could mean everything for your ability to fortify your community, the black community in Chicago. It could mean any, it could be, it, it could, it could mean a lot. It could mean a lot. Even if it's for only two years or four years, just to stop the bleeding. That's it. You're using them and you're using politics, you're using the vote, you're using the Republicans as a tool for this particular issue to stop and slow down the bleeding as it pertains to the so-called migrants. That may be more than enough time that you need in order to get yourself together to fortify your community. You get what I'm saying? Is what I'm saying making sense? Sometimes I feel like I'm not articulating things the best, but I, I feel like overall, generally you, you all get what I'm saying. And I feel like what I'm saying is very logical. It's logical. Use them as the tools that they are. That's what you should be doing. Shout out to Cutthroat Nash for always coming through. I see a couple super chats came through while I was uh, standing on my soapbox. Um, and I'm going to get to you all right now. Cutthroat Nash always showing support. Thank you very much, brother. Cutthroat Nash says, uh, Dutchess uh, County put a freeze on the asylum seekers from New York. That's what I'm saying. You see? They put a freeze on it. Dutchess County put a freeze on the asylum uh, seekers from New York City. Entertain the GOP in Chicago at this moment in time for this particular issue. I'm not telling you now and forever. Use them for as the tools that they are. And this for, for this particular issue, use them for the tools that they are to see if you can get a temporary freeze on this kind of stuff. Get a temporary freeze on the so-called asylum seekers to give you a breather so that now Black Chicago has an opportunity to fortify itself. I feel like that makes logical sense, man. And anybody saying otherwise, <laughs> you're you're all very fortunate that I don't actually speak my mind. And I'll I'll leave it at that for those of you who think otherwise. I I, I bite my tongue quite a bit. And, uh, you're very fortunate for that. Uh, shout out to yeah, <laughs> big hotep name right there. <laughs> <laughs> Extra hold up with it. Um, Kiefer Ka Heru um, <laughs> Jutimos. I don't know. Hey, shout out to you, man. Shout out, man. Shout out to all my hotel hooligans out there. I got to get t shirts printed up. Hotel hooligans, man. So, you know, shout out to all my hotel hooligans. Um, my hotel hooligan brother or sister, right here. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Said, I think it's um, far past time our people stop voting on emotions and start voting on logic. I 100% agree. I 100% agree, you know, to my fellow Hotep hooligan uh, brother or sister, uh, whichever gender you <laughs> identify with, right? <laughs> and shout out once again to uh, W coming through with uh, another super chat. W said, uh, they're down on their, they're, they're down on their multicultural made knee pads for treats. I agree. Uh, there's a couple more that I need to get to. Shout out to Russ with the super sticker. I appreciate the support. Uh, and thank you very much, Ray Alexander. Uh, TD Hip Hop Media, could you interview New York Times writer Charles Blow about his book, A Black Power Manifesto, and the concept of reverse migration? I'm actually going to write that down right now. Let me write that down. Um, because I'm not going to go back and re watch this and yeah, I, I forget everything. All right. So Charles Blow. Okay. Uh, a black power manifesto, black power manifesto. Okay. I, I'll, I'll look into that. And thank you very much uh, for your support to the channel. Uh, let's see if there's any more. And then I'm going to we're going to close this thing out. I got a couple more things that I wanted to uh, passages that I wanted to read from this article. Um, OK, it looks like that does it. So now let's carry on. And there are 526 of you in here right now. Uh, please smash the like button if you haven't already. Please hit that like button. Um, 
so that YouTube knows that people are actually interested in this content and that they'll push it. I hit the like button, share this video uh, on your social media platforms. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button. So you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. Now, uh, let's get into some more of what we have over here. And I'm going to have to get through this very quickly within the next 10 minutes. So let me toss my notes to the side because they don't matter anymore. And because uh, <laughs> I got to I got to head out of here and uh, let me read this off. So some black aldermen who have struggled uh, themselves admit they are conflicted. Maria Hayden with the 49th Ward voted yes, but asked community members helping the migrants to help people who live in Chicago. Everybody that is working hard for this, we have to show up for black Chicagoans with the same energy and that does mean money, Hayden said. Now here's my thing with what um, Maria Hayden just said, right? Who was, you know, black woman for those of you who don't know. That sounds good. You have to show up for black Chicagoans with the same energy and that does mean money. It, that that sounds good but here's the problem and it's also the problem with you know uh i'm going to read a quote from jeanette taylor also next from the outside looking in i'm just an outsider i'm just some guy and i'm a commentator just some guy talking into a microphone in south central la to me it makes logical sense that in a situation like this you play hardball you don't give you vote no and you stand firm on the grounds of, listen, either we're going to work this out for everybody or we're not going to work it out at all. Because that's how it always goes for black folks. It got to be for everybody. Nothing can just be for black people. Right. That's unconstitutional. That's divisive. OK, well, we're going to play that same game here. We're not voting for this until you make it all inclusive to everybody. We're going to spread that 51 million dollars around for everybody. That's what should have happened. You play hardball. You don't give in, vote yes, and then turn around and say, okay, guys, now we looked out for you. It's your turn. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. That's working backwards. It's your turn to show up for black Chicagoans now. Show up for black Chicagoans with that same energy. And that does mean money. It's too late already. You already, they, they, they're, they're not going to do it. There's no incentive for them to do it. You've already given them what they want. The precedent has already been set that you will, that you will continue to do what they want. There is no incentive for them to do for you now. I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's really irritating and, and, and disappointing when you're reading this stuff, you know, cause if little old me, you know, sit in this little old room in little old South Central L.A. talking in this little old microphone on a little old live stream. If I understand this, how can these politicians who are supposed to be way smarter than me not understand this? Right. I'm not educated. Right. I barely got out of high school. What do I know? Right. But I have a better grasp on this mentally than they do. I don't I don't understand. I just don't get it. Uh, the issue was emotional for 20th Ward Alderman Jeanette Taylor. She said, while black people have fought for a seat at the table, it doesn't mean they shouldn't help others who are struggling. Here's a direct quote from her. We fight just to drink out of a damn fountain. But hurt people don't hurt. Wait, but hurt people don't hurt all of the hurt people, Taylor said. I'm going to read that again. The issue was emotional with 20th Ward Alderman Jeanette Taylor. She said, while black people have fought for a seat at the table, it doesn't mean they shouldn't help others who are struggling. We fight just to drink out of a damn fountain. But hurt people don't hurt all of the hurt people, Taylor said. Taylor's passionate statement received standing ovation from her colleagues. So I guess she's saying hurt people shouldn't hurt people. This, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is many of you, some of you may know who she is. This is, um, Jeanette Taylor. Right. Um, and she was also the woman that, uh, she got a lot of press, uh, about a year or two back. Cause she was the one that was arguing very fiercely with, um, 
Lori Lightfoot a couple of years ago, I guess on the uh, city council floor, you know, she got kind of famous for that to a degree. I've heard a lot about her, you know, from my understanding, um, she's solid and she cares about black Chicago. You know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dump on her right now because like I said, I, maybe I'm wrong about her. You know, uh, I haven't deep dived into her, but from what I've heard, I've heard good things about her. Right. So it was really disappointing for me to read that statement coming from her that hurt people shouldn't hurt people and stuff like that, because it, it, it really statements like that hurt what we're doing here and hurt protests that are going on in Chicago, because what you're saying is that we're the ones who are wrong for calling out the hypocrisy and injustice that's going on in Chicago, where black Chicagoans for years have been told that we don't have money for you. We don't have finances for you. We don't have resource, resources for you. I did a video like two years back where I completely debunked the myth and the lie that uh, uh, black Americans don't hold each other accountable when it comes to black on black violence. I put it to bed a couple years back. Some of you may remember that video. It was specifically focused on Chicago where I highlighted a multitude of organizations led by black men in the city of Chicago that were all stop the violence organizations. They were all clean up the streets organizations. There are so many organizations in the city of Chicago that are working tirelessly with the limited resources that they have doing the best that they can to quote, stop the violence, to put an end to quote, black on black violence. But they don't have the resources that they need. They don't get the funding that they need. They don't get the attention that they deserve because all that goes to Black Lives Matter, right? But they exist. And they've been asking for the resources so that we, Black Chicagoans, right, can solve our own issues. But they they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. But yet when you have illegal immigrants coming into the city being bused by way of uh, Greg Abbott in Texas, now all of a sudden you got plenty of money. You're not being xenophobic for calling that out. You're not hurting people or hurting anyone for pointing that out. And that's what that statement that she made does. It makes it look like we're the ones who are wrong. And the brothers and sisters standing up in Chicago are the, are the ones who are wrong for highlighting the hypocrisy and injustice that I just that I just stated. That when black folks were asking for it, yeah, <clears throat> we don't we, we don't got it. Sorry. <laughs> We don't got it. It's divisive. It's unconstitutional. And just flat out, no. But as soon as these folks show up, now all of a sudden we're making it rain. $50 million that's going to last until like, what, the end of July? Last live stream, what is it? What did they say? They said this, this so-called migrant crisis, man-made crisis by Joe Biden uh, is costing the city of Chicago $20 million a month. $20 million a month. That's crazy just making it rain on the whole situation. But if we point it out, we're the ones that are wrong. If we point it out, we're hurting people. Yes, we acknowledge that black folks are hurt, but hurt people don't hurt people. That coming from her, I was, I was very disappointed. Cause like I said, from what I've heard about Jeanette, she's solid. She's solid. So uh, it disappointed me greatly that she would make a statement like that. Shout out to YGLT for the super chat. YGLT said uh, the most accurate symbol and mascot for the Democratic Party is the donkey because we are the proverbial jackass that continues to let them ride our backs and work to the benefit of everyone else except us. I 100 percent agree with you, YGLT, and your comment, your statement is the perfect one to end today's stream on. So I want to thank you all for joining me today. I want to thank all of you who contributed to today's show. It is deeply appreciated, much needed, and does not go unnoticed. Please hit the like button on your way out. There are 566 of you in here right now. Hit the like button on your way out, please. Share this video out on your social media platforms. Also, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't already, 
make sure you follow me on Telegram. The link to my Telegram is pinned in the live chat. It is also in the description box below, and it will be pinned in the comment section once this live stream is over. And also, if you have not already, make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. Text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification whenever I go live. And that helps to circumvent the shadow banning and all of that foolishness that comes with social media and YouTube, right? And that's also where Telegram comes in as well. So I want to thank you all for joining me today. And I will holler at you guys next live stream on Friday. Peace.